In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this chance to think about, ponder, and converse with the Holy Mass. Help us understand more deeply what we are doing here, to love the Mass more truly, to engage it more fully, adore you, and more completely. We entrust this time, this conversation to you in the hands of our mother as we say, Him. Oh, grace, Lord, Jesus, be. Bless us, our God, and our mother, and bless us, the Spirit of God, and Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a real quick thing then, so obviously next week, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. We're in the, not the next week. Probably the next two weeks because Christmas and New Year's. So vacation. Vacation. Enjoy your holiday. Go, go eat some cookies or fudge or something. <laughs> Time with some family. Take a nap. <laughs> this is one of my plans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful Christmas plans. What do they got during the Mass, though? <laughs> Unfortunately, for all the ones who can't get away with it. I was going to say that. If I thought Slipper, I would have probably gone. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Article 69. I'm hoping, we'll see, we can get the only ten. We're kind of from the end here. We'll see if we can get through all. We do great, we don't great. So we still interrupt you with a chunk. No, you interrupt as much as you want. I, I, I'm, merely, I'm merely stating a plan. But plans change. At the end of every Mass, we're told to go forth. The hope of this instruction is that strength of our being that occurred, seen the witness. We'll be able to go back into our holiday lives and live with for Christ. We bring him to others we meet. That is life where it's down. There's a depressing statement. <laughs> we can prepare to turn the last and have a class with him once more. We can be nourished as all to the heavenly realm. And this, by the way, is why the way back in church I have that written uh, over the entry of my moment of the gospel of the Lord. Um, as a reminder, we're walking out the last thing we see, and sort of that we're coming from the altar, getting back up to our lives. Um, we're not just called to serve God here, we're called to serve God in everything we do and everywhere we go. This is the engine, this is where we get the energy, this is where we get the light to do that. We're ready to serve God in our families, in our work, in our hobbies, in our entertainment. Um, yes, we remember we're married acting as well. <laughs> yeah. With service to God. <clears throat> Remember Saturday. In this way, our life becomes shape of Eucharist. And he moved from one mass to another, from here to another mass. Each time being strengthened and renewed by his body and life. It is not therefore left in our time to choose to come to routine. <clears throat> Instead, please God, may it be that time we look forward to each day, each week, to the time of us all. Remember that we are the beloved, and desire is for us. <clears throat> so the bishop is here, here is exhorting us, or does think for telling us to plan or hope for, is that our life becomes shaped and guided and um, encompassed by the Eucharist. So you were searching for something we stuck in the corners of our day. Here's something we stuck in the corners of our life. Okay, we find the day's mass, but I get back in my life. But it should be for this shape and life and direction to that. It's not coming to mass out of routine or out of anymore or out of here you know, we have to go again because of the mass But this is my time with my God and my beloved. This is the time I get to then will shape and guide and give direction and be the anchor in the center of it. There's very, very different attitudes, very, very different ways of looking at the Mass, letting like the Mass be. And the one will be weary. 
If the mask becomes something I have to get in, to get over and be done with, I'm going to be tired of going through it. If the mask forms and shapes and becomes a place where I meet my beloved, it will be a wondrous, beautiful thing and give strength and shape and beauty to my life. And see, we're pressing along this. We won't quit. Number seven again. Whether it be the song of daily prayer at Christmas, it's a good, good, good time for this. On Good Friday, in the middle of summer, we're constantly reminded to worship in a little more. And he has a couple of different places from the Mass. Who come as first from bow down and kneel before the Lord of Man. Psalm 85, Psalm 86. First of all, in holy attire, meaning virtue and holiness. The attire of the soul is the attire of the body. Christmas we hear, who come as the Lord, who come on your faith. On Good Friday, as the cross presents in the church, we pray, Behold the word of the cross, which is on the salvation of the world, come as the Lord. The final example of well known wonderful hymns says, Praise the Lord, all that is in me adore him. All that is light and bright, come now with praise before him. <coughs> it is with this theme of adoration that I would like to close the present episode of temptation. For it is one that's of particular resonance when it comes to the Christ, that of you. I've been on this before, but I've encouraged the priests, the people of the river, to make a regular home now. Let's hear that it a few texts so let's understand more fully what adoration is meant to be. So, a couple of things we've talked about before, but I think it's not to remember. Um, let's look at the term adoration. That's the term friendship with God. What is adoration? Adoring. Okay, what's adoring? Loving. Okay, what's loving? Well, how yeah, worship it. <laughs> Acknowledging who God is. Acknowledging who God is, okay. So acknowledging who God is. Acknowledging. Who God is. Giving our mind to him. Who is God? God is a supreme being. Supreme being? Our creator. Creator, supreme being, good. Source of our life. Source of our life, good. How about our goal? And your goal as well. Source of all. And so adoration is this attitude of heart and mind. They acknowledge, we acknowledge our God, we recognize who he is, and we honor him and love him in that way. It's not just acknowledging who God is, it's the honor and love. Unique honor and love, the only gift to God. <laughs> Recognizing who he is. Because right? the devil loves God. The devil does not love God. Um, and, so, and so it's the unique honor, the unique love we give to God because of who he is. Now, this love that God seeks, it's, what is love? Is love an emotion? It can be. Can you that? But not only emotion, and not most simple important. I'm going to the bells were off here and think somebody had a chance yet. <laughs> they were 20 minutes off, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because they turn the power off when they're on us. They might. For 12 months. <laughs> the greatest commandment. What was that? The greatest commandment. Greatest commandment? Yeah. Uh, what is it? It's uh, 
And so what does it mean to love someone? Oh, what does it mean to love someone? Um, to have a, the highest respect for them and want to be with them. And highest respect? Well, you can love your enemies, though. I mean, you just have to sort of respect that then. What do you mean by, by that? Um, I, I, or what well, it means? To, to do uh, his will. To do his will and, and to want something service. important. Service? To want their good. Yes. Yeah. So Aquinas simply says, want their good. You're all right. You know what it is. But Aquinas says, love is to want the good. What was best? How can you want what is best for God? This is God. You can't want what is best. That is the question. Exactly. That's how it looks. No. That's exactly. Not. It doesn't make sense. Exactly. It makes sense coming down and not going up. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> Good. Right. So, Good. Does this does the question that we sit down by the question sir? No. We love each other, except God loves us, the question does. How do I look up? How do I how do I pray should we know? Yes. But how can how can I when we're flawless to what was best, how can I what was best for God? What was that? You can pray. Does that don't you know? You're giving yourself to him and allowing him to work with us. I think you're on the right track. So the, the center of this is obviously we can't want more from God, right? If you can't say, Lord, I want to, I wish I wanted to give you more of this or more of that, because God has it. You, if, you want, if you think you're going to give God more of something, help of something, they don't recognize who He is. You miss something. <laughs> But for God, what it means is, is that we rejoice that He has everything that He has, and we are glad that He enjoys everything that He has. So it's not that we're wanting more for God in this unique case, but we're rejoicing in the goodness of God in Himself. Not for my sake, not what God does for me, but who God is in Himself. But it's acknowledging of who God is. So we're rejoicing that God is, is Almighty, that God needs nothing, that God has all things, as the source of all And this is the heart of adoration. This friendship, this love, is the heart of adoration. Where I come to God, I say, Lord, I rejoice you are who you are, or things you have you have, I rejoice that you're almighty, you have all good things. This, this becomes praise, the veneration, this becomes love and friendship. That attitude of rejoicing in God's goodness, God is what he is and has what he has. So thankfulness? No, so it's not God's goodness for us, it's God's goodness in himself. Um, it's God's greatness, God's power, God's perfection. So it's other focus. It's not wanting more for God, but, but it is it is this joy that God is what He is and has what He has. In the same way that you might, uh, for a good friend, be happy that, that they, you know, want something or, or value a car or be nice to have them. You're happy when that happens for your good friend. I hope. Darn <laughs> you! You fool, you got any car. You, you rejoice for them. You know, somebody nice happens to them. You, you, you like to, people you love like saying they're enjoying. You like seeing people enjoy something. And so with God, with God, we say God is enjoying everything. And we rejoice in that. We rejoice in God's enjoyment of His greatness, His perfections, everything He has. And that is the center, that's what we be friends with God, that's the center of adoration. That makes sense? And so this then is the ultimate attitude we have toward the Eucharist and toward the Mass. 
We come to God to adore Him. We come to God to rejoice with Him. We come to God to recognize who He is. We do so not by ourselves, our own intellect, our own will, our own efforts, but with the joy, the goodness, the greatness of the Divine Son. And so our rejoicing is going to be perfect that takes place in, with, and through the heart of Christ. Where the cross gives out the perfect adoration, the perfect blessing, the perfect response of the cre of creation to the Creator. Right? Because in Christ, Christ's humanity is a created thing. Right? The, the person, the divine word, was uncreated, it's always this. But the humanity began to exist in the incarnation. And so this is why he's able to give adoration in a truly human way. This is why he's able to say the Father is greater than I, because it's, it's human nature, the Father is greater. This is how creation and human beings are able to bless the door of God in a perfect way. Because, the, because Christ, the divine word, has part of him, um, which is this, is this nature which is truly creator. Which then, which then through the divine word is able to give the Father and the Trinity for regeneration from the response of creation. Which is incredibly beautiful to God's Questions? So this, this is a lot. That's important. Uh, their practice is making sense. What's the reason why people don't come to adoration? That, that's a lot. They won't do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to It is. So beautiful. So beautiful. Perfections. Number 72. First, I would like to point out, point out to us to homily of Pope Francis. In which he reminds us of the necessity of adoring the Lord, fearing no personally in our dollars. He also comes to our simplicity in our adoration of God Almighty. All this is only possible to recognize Jesus Christ, because it is He who has called us, invited us to follow His way, and chosen us. To announce that this is possible only if we are close to him, says Peter, John, the disciples, our rounders, and leaders, and God's pastor to them. But they are close with him, and they, well, they know well who he is. They know him. Now, the evangelists emphasize that nobody there asked to worry him because they knew well it was the Lord. This is an important point for us. Live in an intense relationship with Jesus. Intimacy of dialogue and life is recognizing him as the Lord. This recognition of adoration is knowing who he is. To adore him. I would like all of us to pose a question to ourselves. You need to be adored the Lord. Do we go to God with ask to thank him? Or do we go to him also to adore him? What's the need to then to adore him? Means to yearn to be with him, to offer ourselves so as to dialogue with him. Feel that his presence is the most true, the most good, the most important of all. Each of us in our own life, in a conscious way, and perhaps without realizing it, have a precise order of the thing that is more or less important. To adore the Lord means to give him the place that you have. To adore the Lord means to affirm, believe, not simply, not, not simply with the words, but that he alone guides our life. For the Lord means that we are convinced for him that he loves is God, the God of our life, the God of our history. Some of the saints talk about what they call a practical atheism. You could say atheism in practice. So these are this is what happens when you say all the right things, all the right things, say God is my God, and live your life in the word of God. Live your life what? As though there were no God, or as though I'm God. That's a 
a different practice. And so if God is not in the first place, God is not the ruler of the center of life, and he's not God to me, by treating him as God. He's not the one directing me, guiding me, you know, the, the, the one who ordered my life, the one who directs my life. I'm living in nature. And my heart, my life, is showing that I truly believe. I might know in my head, oh yeah, these are all the right answers. But I'm not giving God the place he deserves and acting like he, he is my God. I'm a practical atheist. Michael, yes. Yes. All the right answers, right? He's doing all the right things. Um, on the, on the, on the, in that sense, yeah. you know, yeah, the whole thing where you renounce Satan, you reject him, you say, oh, he's the only one who's in all my words. I renounce Satan, I renounce the works, I renounce the pride, I renounce that he's kind of being murdered, he's stealing, and he's. Why? <laughs> um, yeah. So, yes, it's absolutely the practical atheist. No, he's. The very term Godfather is he's, he's there to stand for baptism and that people to heaven. He's not doing it. So, with people who, um, which I heard you correctly, so with practice atheism in practice, or practical atheism, that also, would you put in people when life is good? They basically stop going to mass and they stop giving credit to God wherever it is. Life is good until life takes a turn and then they come back. Sure, could be, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because basically what they're saying is at the end of the day, what's really important is me. So the center of my life, what gives back to life, what makes it not a meaning is not God, it's, it's myself. And so God, God is not really God to me. I'm not really putting him first. I'm not really giving him the place he deserves. I'm not really loving him, adoring him, and worshiping him as I promised him. I'm only coming to him and saying the right things to get what I want. And the Lord is merciful. The Lord is good at times. He, you know, he uses that as the first step. But certainly, if if we only love God. Um, if we're only good for whatever we watched, if we're only following God when, when it's mean for us, I'm not really following God. I'm only going to follow God as long as I'm going in the direction I want to go. I'm not following God. You know someone who is following the Lord when it's going in the direction that they were not to go. That's why Christ says, "Take your cross and follow." I, I see two two yeah. examples of that. One is the individual who's had a bad life experience and's fallen away from God, uh, blames God, and then you see people who, I, I guess, the word would be neglect because life is going good for them and they yeah. fail to. So both of those would be examples of practical atheism. Could be, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we want to be careful with, with judging individual persons. Yeah. Um, because there are circumstances or things going on in life that is not going to be, may not be really possible for them. But yes, in the abstract, absolutely. Uh, people who neglect God, either because they're mad at him or because they just don't care about him, both cases, he's not first. Absolutely. In order to come close to our Lord, in order to follow Him, we have to know who He is. If you know who He is, it's going to mean these things. And you see two extremes in yeah. both in today's society. Absolutely. Yeah. People blame God for their life and what's going on in it, and therefore they just move away, and you see people who neglect. And fail to give credit for their successes. Right. Yeah, right. And I better things to do on a Sunday. Yeah. Exactly. I'll go every once in a while, but when things are kind of busy, when I'm tired, when I you know, see friends, when family's in town, when I'm on vacation, you know, we get you. We're not living the 
the negatives. Right? We, we, because the direction of your life, the goals of your life, the plans of your life are following. The living is though, there's no difference from what you're living and the way you're living. Not right. So bottom line just boils down to keeping God as sin of your life. Yeah. Regardless of the circumstances. And if not sin of your life, then he's not God. So right. You're worshiping something else. Something else is important. There's other God in his place. Yeah. Questions? Right. No, I was just thinking that from you to who by way of his music. That book I thought that was on evolution. Some people think, you know, everything just oh. came from a simple cell. It's more than just yeah. neglect, it's just they flat out don't believe in anything right. divine. And so that would be safety. So practical atheist would be someone who says I'm Catholic, who says I'm Christian, but doesn't practice. You know, practice it. So, so for 98% of society, and I think it's just because of our prosperity and our country, at least, but the world is pretty prosperous right now. Yeah, I think there's a few reasons, but, but yes, uh, there are times when sometimes the worst punishment the Lord can give us is to make us prosperous. Well, it, it's hard to, if you really want to live, you know, for the Lord, for God, you really have to look at yourself, and it's tough. The world of flesh, yes, yeah. To acknowledge, you know, our imperfections, and, and so it, it's tough, so people, you know, are afraid of you. And it's easy to be distracted, right? It's very easy. It's easy to be distracted away from the little close at your heart. Yeah. 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 It's easy to be under, to be entertained, and then. Okay. Those things are bad for themselves, but they, 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 can, they can take the place of God, they can distract us from God, and keep us from recognizing the problems. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, they keep us from recognizing people, too. Sometimes. You know, where you can see families who never talk to each other because they're busy texting or. You know, they're sitting there. You need couples who are at the dinner table together and they have to say a word to each other. Because they're on their phone and they're looking at YouTube or you know, watching the TV or texting or. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Someday we're going to get rid of this thing, unfortunately. We'll be on call. <laughs> yeah, no. There are definitely are days where I wish I could put this thing away. You would get more sleep. I said you might get more sleep if you were on call. I might. But I also think we're going to be kind of losing that out of me if I were to say, you know what? Another person died at the sacraments. <laughs> I don't care if you're not. I don't care if you're not. I thought that was just a dream. <laughs> you're breaking up. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> you That's right. All right, number 73. These words call all of us to pause to reflect. We actually come to God simply to spend time with Him. The friendship of Him, the love for Him, just recognizing who He is. To hang out with God is my friend. Yeah. Or is it always only about the things I need in my life? Lord, give me this, I need this, help me with this. Forgive me for that. But to be with Him is just like one thing. Is He a vending machine? To learn my prayer, will love and treat there is, of course, a time and place need for that. You need to pray to God, you need to ask Him that you need to recognize our need. You should also remember what the Lord means, the words and truths of that world. Taking time frequently to be alone with Him will be no lost in us. Or as the peasant of ours said, simply looking at Him who looks at us. There are four kinds of prayer. All necessary. Um, and often they intertwine and mix together. 
for, for the four kinds of electrons. You. Does anyone ever know the four kinds of prayer? Cats. Cats or acts or yes. Yes. Very good. And what are cats? Intuition or, um, yeah. Adoration, thanksgiving, Yes. Good. And of course, it's intertwined. We feed off each other and rely on each other. But yes. Saying we're sorry, adoring God, thanking God, asking for our gifts. Absolutely. So. Or it was the order I was with him. I was the man with acts. But I know. Cats were I don't understand again. why it is acts. But maybe it's because you're supposed to adore for you. Supplication. Oh, I see. <laughs> I mean, but you should. But you probably switched to that. So. We're, we're trying to approach it from a other operation. You tax? <laughs> well, I wonder if there is a specific scan. I guess adoration probably is first. Adoration is first. Adoration should be underlined as one. Adoration, of course, underlined. You know, we, we're sorry because of who he is. We thank him because of what he's done. We ask him because of the preference he is. We're asking things that are going him where we're missing something. You know, so that they're they're just fine. Um, but yes. There's a supplication, doesn't that include intercession? Yes. Yeah. So supplication is also for other people as well, yeah. Absolutely. And Thanksgiving also includes praise, you know, so there's this is you know it's a simplified version be more complicated than this, and of course they're intertwined with each other. But being human beings, they take things in small chunks. We're not going to get it. These are our small, bite-sized pieces. Of, but yeah, we just kind of want to spend time with God, just to be with God. Um, so there's a reason why, uh, vocationally, for certain people in, in the confession, I'll get the pants and just go and spend time with God. Just sit with him. You need to be with him. Just take the time with him. You, know, you spend time however you want to, but just give him the time with him. Next, we look to Habakkuk 16. He reminds us that adoration was the sacrament, is an extension of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But that a close to that it completes the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Because what's the sacrifice? Sacrifice is the act of adoration. So the holy sacrifice of the Mass is not the holy act of adoration. So, of course, adoring God is going to flow from adoration. In the Eucharist, some of God comes to meet us and desires to become one with us. Literally, we receive Him, we become one with Him, um, body and soul. Eucharistic adoration is in the natural consequence of the Eucharistic celebration. Is itself a supreme act of adoration. And why is the Mass supreme act of adoration? Because of the end Last Supper. I'm doing what he asked us to do. That's Last Supper, and who, who was leading the Last Supper? Jesus. Jesus. Right, so this is our Lord's adoration of all. And so we're joining him, we're taking part. Uh, it's the greatest act of adoration because Christ's sacrifice of Calvary and the Last Supper is love for the Father, the Rich for the Father, and we're joining it. So, the door of the Eucharist going to the church many times with our Lord is simply an act of consequence of this celebration. It's a supreme act of adoration. Receive the Eucharist well, it's the door of Him we receive. Only in this way do we come on with him or give him back as it were a foretaste of the beauty of the heavenly and the liturgy. The adoration of the sign of mass prolongs and intensifies all that takes place during the return of the celebration itself. Indeed, only adoration can have profound and general reception mature. It is precisely in this personal encounter with the Lord 
then strengthens the social mission contained in the Eucharist. So you should break down not only the walls separate the Lord and ourselves, but also especially the walls separate us from one another. Right, so the more that I recognize deliberately and, and personally what the Eucharist is, who the Eucharist is, and what's happening for the fact that, that, that the presence of the Lord, the better we're going to be able to celebrate Mass, the better we're going to be able to walk with God, the better we're going to go out and carry out the mission to go down to the world for the news. The better we're going to be able to go out to my, my daily life and to carry out my daily life the work of God. The better we're going to be able to go out in my daily life and to have that fuel, that presence of God with me, to walk with God like I walk with me. In my family, in my work, in everything that I do. It begins with, with this truth of who God is, what's happening. <coughs> and the Lord, and the Pope says that when we recognize the Lord and adore Him, then I can receive Him well. Right? I'm not receiving simply out of routine, or simply because everyone else that doesn't matter. I receive it because this is my God. Be close to and so the more I adore him, the more I'm going to receive him and be nigh him. And the more that I'll be able to go out to the world and love my brothers and sisters. So all these things go hand in hand and are connected to each other. The question is thinking. Behold his well and among us let us out. So the Lord gave us the Eucharist for three reasons. <coughs> the Lord of the Last Supper gave us the Eucharist for three reasons. Be our sacrifice. We can adore God and hold the Holy Mass. Two is to be our nourishment. Of course, Holy Communion. And three is to be present among us. <laughs> So that though he goes away to heaven in the ascension, he also remains truly with us and stays with us. That the one of us so much we found a way that the way they have to leave to establish the kingdom, to bring humanity to heaven, to prepare, prepare a place for us, he says. Not only to do that, and also stay with us. Truly be with us, literally, physically, personally. And this is why the Lord gives us the universe. Who we are in his life. 
This means the only people that's going to matter. Should make time each week, even every day, if possible. This is our Lord in the tower. He waits there for us only as I see our face before him. If God gave us this gift, is with us. It's because he hopes we're going to use it. This is the astonishing thing, is that God longs to spend time with him. God longs to be close to him. God longs to see him. Isn't that astonishing? That God who needs nothing, who knows everything, who has everything, who is everything, who contains all of himself, who is all perfection, all goodness, all greatness, longs to be you so much, you humble himself with him, man, die, and comes to us in the middle of you. And he waits. And then he waits for us. He doesn't come to us as you know, you know, you set out the angels to drag you by your hair or to whip you into the shape and you know, he waits. He still humbles himself and he waits for you and he invites you. That is incredible. That God longs for you. That God wants to be close to you. He found a way to do this so much so that we could be afraid to see him, we could receive him tired. We could be fed by him, transformed by him, led by him, be healed by him. So the Eucharist does not begin with our longing for God. It's not us making plans now to finally, finally figure out a way to trick him into coming down. It begins with God's love for us, desiring us. Find a view with us. You respond. It's a response. Our adoration, our love, our mass, are responding to what he's doing for us. Two weeks. It's, it's beautiful, it's crazy, it's in the best possible way. It's beautiful in the best possible way. And this is why we need to be continually going back, because it, as the Pope says, as the bishop says, we are distracted. You know, life is a tractor. You ever see the movie Country Up? The, the dog is walking with the squirrel? That's us. <laughs> Shiny objects do entertain us very quickly. <laughs> they do drag us away very quickly. People say, Lord, I'm so full of you today. Every forever, remember you and praise you and thank you. Five minutes later, we're, we're, we've said again. <laughs> And so we, the response is to come back always to the source, come back always to life, come back always to God. So you receive His mercy, His forgiveness, His healing, His health, His life. That's what we're called to respond, to recognize, to receive, to come close, and to let Him help us to the Lord, help us to be close, and help us to feed us, be close to us day by day. This is so beautiful, so beyond we can get in our own brains. These might have maybe you can get it. As a last guy goes, I'd like us once again to hear the angelic doctor, Thomas Aquinas. The sanctuary of Thomas Aquinas has been a short guide for those who desire an increased devotion of the Lord Jesus in the Eucharist. And there's a quote here then from Pope Pius XI. His last day, our doctor, Thomas Aquinas, possessed an exceptional and highly privileged gift, able to convert his precepts to liturgical prayer for things. So he became the poet and jurist of the divine Eucharist. He was a great philosopher, he was a really brilliant man, but also to take these really complicated thoughts. And make them the prayers. Wherever the Catholic Church is, he found the world for whatever nations. They suggest that use his forever willing activity in their sacred services that came to the close of Thomas. They express the regard to the vocation of the soul to pray. 
At the same time, perfect statement of the doctrine of the sacrament, said by the apostles. Family described the mystery of faith. If these considerations are borne in mind as well as the praise bestowed by Christ Himself, which you already referred to, I would be surprised that Thomas should even receive the title of the Doctor of the Eucharist. One of my favorite stories about um, the Cross Aquinas. I mean, Aquinas was a genius. I mean, he's probably one of the top four or five greatest minds in the ministry. Um, the man used to compose five books at the same time. Um, he'd stand in the room and dictate to one person in one corner, wait till they were there, busy writing, but the next point, pick up a different book, different chapter, different thing. Third point, open back, the first point, pick up that book. He said, you have to write a word for it. Really, really mad. And he wrote these very complicated words that to this day influence and guide our thought on, on so many things. But he also was a man deeply in love with the Lord. And I love the story where he was one day um, in the mountain monastery with brothers, a pile of mountains. There was a terrible summer thunderstorm. Lightning strikes and thunder, they were high up. And all the monks were trying to place to hide and find shelter. They couldn't find Brother Thomas. And they found him at last. He was in the church. He was on his own tabernacle and he said, Leave me against the door of the people above the tabernacle. He was a brilliant genius, but close to one. Mark said, I need to do that, by the way. <laughs> The same is true that Thomas Aquinas is our guide in the Eucharist in his pages. And therefore, look to yet another line from Thomas' Eucharistic hymnody. On which the Lord Church of Sir is on Holy Thursday and every occasion, Federation of the Sacrament. While familiar to men, is there a found meaning to be explored all our, our prayer? Our second thus to sing this. Had to marry those sacramentum, but they were more churning. This is the hymn we sing in that nature. But literally, you could say this means that's a great sacrament there for this worship. Or in headlong, their faces toward the ground. A little fluid that you could say, that's a mind prostrate for severe sacrament. In other cases, could have come as Aquinas to remind us of the proper attitude you have with that as a God. And the reverent test of the sacrament has the humility of upward reverence. Even at the point of falling flat on our faces out of full love, fear, and adoration, devotion. But that uh, brings expectation to a close. At this point, it's simply like to express my great desire for each one of us. The diet to gather. Myself as our bishop to each priest, to each brother, and sister, sort of sister. Family individuals. In the coming months and years where they love us, each of us may learn to long for the Lord in the Eucharist. Just as we alert long for flowing streams, Psalm 42. Then with the songs we can truly say to the Lord in the Eucharist, O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as the dry and land where the water is. So I looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Let us pray for another to this praise for the end. May the heart of Jesus was the sacrament of the altar. He praised the Lord by the way of affection every moment. And all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. And so what we're hoping for, the whole point of this discussion of this letter, of reading this, it's meant to be a practical thing. If all it is is nice discussion with each other, it's not a bad thing, but it's not sufficient. We want this to end with a practical, deep in emotion of to our Lord, with a practical, realistic, greater love for the Eucharist, we recognize more fully who it is, and longing more deep for our Lord. Okay.
Because our longing is only going to be in response to his longing. Our longing is only going to be in response to his invitation. And we recognize who he is, the friend he wants for us, what he's done for us, what he's given us, the invitation he has. Yeah, yeah. Then we will become unthinkable to neither. Then it will be unthinkable not to the Then it will be unthinkable not to the center of our lives. That's what we want. It's to praise, to love, to adore, to be close to But you see, it's come so close to us. And really, that's the whole point of Christmas, isn't it? The point of Christmas is recognizing God has come close to us. God has longed for us to draw near to us and invites us to draw near. And the Eucharist takes this and makes this real. Takes this and makes it practical. Takes this and makes it able to receive, to grasp, to hold, to embrace the infant child of man. So, should this be what we do? Let's take this and make it practical. This out of our lives. So he wrote this in June of 2022, and it's going to be 2024 in like a week. Yeah. Yep. And it took a year and a half. I guess we got this book like six months ago. You got six months ago, so it to be published. Like a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, so that was a long time. Yeah, it goes right. Don't, don't, don't say anything. Don't talk about it. Keep at it. It's enough. I was in the notes, right? Um, questions, comments? About anything? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're probably going to have to shut the camera off. <laughs> 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 I don't think you ever want to get recorded. Or I don't want the lawyer to answer. <laughs> <laughs> two quick, I got two questions. And uh, so, if it, and I think I know this, I think we touched on it once before in previous class. When an individual dies and the soul goes on, goes to purgatory, and then goes into heaven, mm. will that end up, with that soul, and I'm thinking about it, I'm trying not to think about it from a human, but would it recognize your family? Absolutely. Yes. When you're in heaven? Yes. Yeah. Because part of being a human being means family relationships. Family relationships, friendships. You don't stop being human in heaven. We're perfect in heaven. And so those bonds, those ties, those loves are greater and perfect. They're not lost. Um, the intellect and the free will is still there. Now, until the body resurrects, not the emotions, not going to be some other things. But absolutely, you're going to recognize and know that this is why we can pray the saints. This is, this is why certain saints are given um, authority or patron of certain areas of all. Or some of those. Because of who they were in, in, in their, their lives. Priests are the patrons, the missions, the seminarians, because of her love for, for those things in real life. Um, Anthropating the lost things in love. People with Joseph and Anthony you have to always write and get to do what you want. And yeah, how do people do that? Um, they always write into something, you know, and they always do that to the You know, saints are different, people are different, but you can keep those things, heaven perfects and feels complete. It's not cutting things away. So I guess the answer clapped in the song then, would you know my name? The answer would be yes. Yes. Absolutely. The great theologian. And then the second one, this way, I don't know, thoughts. The Pope just recently came out, blessing. Read the document. So, so, 
The document's very confused and it's answering a question over his head. And so it appears to answer a question but that's not really there. It would be the document. It's a good article on the, on the pillar, by the way. The document's not very long. But all the document, so the document can be summarized in a very simple way. I'm going to put something in the bullet in the uh, email. Well, it's anyway. But basically, what he's saying is individuals can be much. Right? If someone comes to me to sit, it doesn't matter what's in the email. Or they're a murderer, or they're, they're an adulterer, or they're a liar, or they're a thief. Come and say, Father, bless my name, help. I can bless them. I cannot bless a couple or a union. That's not capital, that's not marriage. The Pope says in there, this is not blessing homosexual marriages. It cannot look like it is, it cannot have the appearance of doing that. So that, that, that it's not a marriage, but an individual carries the blessing. The media is taking the media. The media, 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 Who's doing their best to messing up? Um, I'll let you decide which one it is. I'm getting more cynical of myself these days. Uh, but yes, I mean the actual what is it actually saying? The actual letter has changed nothing. It means nothing. You know, all it's simply saying is individuals can be blessed. You cannot bless a union like so it's a marriage. The problem is the word blessing is taken to mean a couple different things. The word blessing is being used in different ways. So if I mean blessing in the sense of making holy a union, no. If I mean asking grace for someone to sin, yes. I can ask grace for anyone to sin. But if not confirm their sin, okay, their sin's okay. But then, really, and the letter says that. But the problem is not being reported that way. It's confusing. Yeah, yeah. And I think the headlines came out before the letter was even published. Yes. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> It's, it's, it's on the Vatican, it's everywhere online these days. Um, the bishop's going to put a statement on it, the Pusivista's statement on it already. Um, the pillar has an article online on it. Uh, but the pillar, it's a Catholic newspaper, has an article. Online to the pillar, the Catholic newspaper, and they have an article, so something, something, something like, did the Pope really legalize same sex marriage? <laughs> so even there, they don't. <laughs> well, they didn't really do it. The South Korean report. And the short answer is no. <laughs> then they go into the act of Sure, sure, sure. No. <laughs> well, a question can you talk about blessing the individual on in that? So, if I'm confirming it, you come to me and say, that Father, I'm struggling with addiction. Oh, well, so, well, okay. Yeah. What if they're already married outside? Obviously, they're unmarried outside the church, they're already yes. living in sin, and then they're coming to you. And so, if you're asking me to confirm their sin or prove their sin, I must not count. If they're saying, well, Father, I need help to get over my sin, help me, I absolutely must. And so it's not a question of, so if I'm blessing the sin, I can't do that. If I'm approving the action, that's wrong. I'm helping the person get rid of the sin, that's good. So there's going to be these couples of people coming to churches that used to be Catholic, together getting a blessing thinking that they are getting blessed when it's not that way at all yes and this is just a nightmare and because it's not being clarified very well it's going to leave all kinds of confusion and scandal actually. Yeah. it's already leading confusion and scandal 
Um, that there are, are people who come to me in this parish who have relatives who are living in gay marriages, who are saying, yeah, the Pope says, okay, now. You know, see, if you're all the law who are opposed to what we do to our marriage, well, he'll be so bad, because look what the Pope said. He'll be so yeah, this is in this, the this great scandal, because... And they won't even read it, or the no. letter that the Pope wrote. No. Just and the problem is answering a question was ever being asked. No one had ever ever thought that if someone came to me living and I had to say, no, I can't touch you, I can't bless you, there's no grace for you, no faith for you. No one ever said that, no one ever thought. And, and so it's being seen by the earth for the Pope saying, blessing in the sense of blessing the marriage, as opposed to helping the individual to over their son. And the problem is because the question wasn't being asked. People think it's answering the question that is being asked. Um, but and how many priests are actually going to believe that he? Yeah. Priests, bishops, <laughs> cardinals. Oh, James Martin said he's going to be a nightmare. He'll be blessing all of these guys. <laughs> Which is against the letter, actually. Let us not to. Uh, no, I don't know, but yeah. he's he's out there saying. Yeah. He can write it right. He and, yeah. and several other people as well. Yeah. Yes. But the answer is, the act letter says you must not do this, cannot be used. Is, I mean, if, before they wrote this letter, did they ever actually sit down and realize all of the mass confusion and, you know, the mixed messages that were going to be going on? So again, the cynical answer, <laughs> and, and there is, so do you believe this, do you either believe this is someone very, very clever, being, being very manipulative? Or it's someone very naive, being very stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure. I'm not sure the answer to that. I'm not sure whether it works much better. Um, I guess the, the second one's better because there's no direct symbol. Right. But I mean, the answer is I can't tell you which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just. But, but you know, yes, yeah, so this absolutely is to cause a great scandal and confusion. Um, but the actual letter is not to cause a great scandal and confusion. But the actual letter. Is not saying what people are saying it says. The actual letter is saying all the right things. It's just saying it in a confusing way because it's answering a question about the answer. Right? And it's using terms in ways that are confusing. So, yeah. What, what stuff I heard on the radio as far as they were going through things, they were saying, what? <laughs> it was just like, the verbiage was just like, can you make it any more confusing? Can you? <laughs> well, I think the, the, the things that if I understood when I read it correctly, when they released it, it, it was in Italian. It came out and was written, and they translated it into different languages. Mm -hmm. So you know there's always going to be people who are going to sit there and say, well, they got lost in translation or something. So, or it didn't really translate across correctly. In the 16th century, there was a big kerfuffle over a paper letter, because the penny replaced a comma. It changed the entire meaning of the sentence. And the one place to think the comma, it was a heresy. The other place to the comma, it was orthodox. And so there was a big argument. Where was the Pope trying to place this comma? We <laughs> ran out of ink at one stuff. And again, right, so all, all the enemies of the church would say, oh, the Pope had a place over here, therefore this heresy is okay. And the Pope was trying to condemn the heresy, but like, there was only, it says, yeah, it says this, you know, we can read it black and white. People need to be more free and just say things in a mean way to be kind. Bluntness is good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we need, we need, we need bluntness and clear clarity, which has been missing for many years. Absolutely. I remember a couple of classes ago, or maybe the last one, uh, it was said, it said that uh, laws, you know, God's laws, lead to freedom. Yes. And if you look at what was in here, uh, it, and you abide by it, it actually leads to one's happiness and, and uh, and tranquility and all of that, and when people go contrary to all of that, uh, it's uh, basically chaos, unhappiness, depression. Yeah. Yep. A couple have you known and have 
terrible, terrible issue. That's the fact. We, we had to move across the street to get a piece of it. We were talking about what they were. I shouldn't judge because <laughs> I'm not perfect myself. So you don't judge the people, the, you must judge the actions. And you must judge the people. I mean, this, all you love the people, you pray for the people, you help the people. Right. But this lifestyle is, is a horrible lifestyle which harms and destroys lives. And therefore, back to you know, God's laws, we actually lead to freedom. Yes. People have it backwards. They think it's it it's all that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And the healing goes back to the Eucharist. Go to the Eucharist. Go break. Another <laughs> question on the camera. Mm-hmm. During the, the Mass and other times as well, there, there's six candles on the altar, three on one side of the tabernacle, three on the other. I always had wonder about that too. Now, on some occasions, the tallest candles next to the so um so what it is is we're a poor parish like it's not light the candles the way you would like to because wax, there are pure beeswax candles. Um, Other churches, the candles never seem to change size. <laughs> yes, because I've heard that there are these candles. Uh, so these are expensive candles, and because of that, we have to be. I would love someday to be able to not do this, but in the meantime, we have to be kind of careful how we like candles. So traditionally, or if we were a little wealthier, there would be, so the Rishma is two candles lit for uh, ordinary days, so the weekdays, um, <coughs> mornings, or mornings. So that is on purpose? What was that? That is on purpose, the number of candles? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, but in our case, it's constrained by practical matters. So for weekdays, And more. So this is a tradition. It's not a law because sometimes it's not possible. But this is a tradition. Two candles for weeks memorials, four candles for feast days, and then six candles for Sundays, solemnities, and Friday. And then there's Seven candles for this <laughs> So, the first thing is this was supposed to be, we can't always do this, and so because we, we do the six candles all day for the Eucharist, I don't just leave everything at two candles. Um, and, so, and so, which two candles you like is going to be which looks best. Um, for the Eucharist, now the set problem we have on our case, we don't have a we don't have a candle set. We have three candle sets. They're all different sizes, different heights. One of these days, I'd like to get real candle. We don't know switching around, but because we have these these three candle sets, um, when the candles are lit, if the candles are going this way, the attention is focused away from the Eucharist. The candles go this way, it tends to focus toward. And so when I'm lighting two, if the ones that are, you know, if, it's, if it's closest to here, it just looks kind of funny because then the, then the ones are, it's just, it's just the way it looks. So if I'm only lighting two, it's better to have them on the end. I'm only lighting two, it looks best to have the, the two lit on the end rather than the ten. But for adoration, it looks best because of the different heights and the candles were anywhere in point where the point was. Uh, so it's just, it's just it's a practical question, but yet, ideally, it all be the same size and we would be able to do this. But 
with the constraints we have, we change things around, so we're iteration, and for the maps we by six, we swoop upward, otherwise we swoop outward. Um, it's because that's the, the practical for constraints we have with having different size uh, candlesticks. So, closest to the the focus is on the Eucharist. Many times it's not. It is, but it's because only two are lit. It would look fine to have the ones closer and have these two at the end on them. It's just, it's just a symmetry. It's just, it's just, that's just plan of stacks. Mm -hmm. um, and so it looks best if you only have a light two have the other ones. Um, it's just, just a matter of you know what the eye looks and then how the things look like from a distance. And so it's just a practical question, it's not a small question. And, and I realize we face a similar issue at home with our advent rates. We have these pretty large uh, candles that we've had for many years now. But for some reason, the last week of Advent's candles still much larger than the rest of the candles. So this year we lit them in reverse order. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, last week about this year, this Christmas is on Monday. Yeah, one day. <laughs> yeah, one day early. Very short week. So what I picked up from this class from the booklet is mass and all of this should be very transformative for people. Not yes. Routine. Good. That's a, a, a worthy thought. <laughs> I'm glad you picked up something. Instead of one father of a shower. Yes. Absolutely. Good. Has this bishop issued other booklets or letters like this in the past? Yes. Um, so he did one. So last year it was that newspaper that had the article on um, Wait, that was no, this paper was this one. There was also newspaper last year. We also did the one on Adoranta. We also did the one on Adoration. Um, there are at least those two. At least those two. But he, 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 he did he give one on encouraging adoration, and he did give one on explaining why the Mass should be said at Adoranta. The face and time. Which is why we do. Um, so they can be found through the diocese and it's just pub published online. If you need hard copies, I think the diocese has them and given them an amount. Um, so I, I believe just contact the diocese and they'll be able to direct you. Yes. Go to the reader. Spirit. Amen.